Hey guys, Icy Cat here. Today, Ubisoft has released its list of top issues and community concerns. These are the things that it is working on right now in the game, and some of them are being taken into effect immediately in a hotfix, and others are things that they have on the table to be worked on in an upcoming patch. But if you want some insight into the things that are on Ubisoft's plate for being immediately addressed, then stick around. I'll show you everything they're talking about next. This post is regarding the top issues and community concerns that the development team are working on at the moment. I will put a link to this in the comments down below the video player so you can check it out for yourself. So starting right off the bat with the big one, which is the clash glitch, which allows some people to be able to glitch in such a way that they can actually fire through her shield being fully extended. This exploit is known and it's something that they're going to be fixing in the long term, but for right now, at least they're actually disabling clash as a selectable operator until they can get a better fix in place. They say that Clash will be temporarily disabled and they're going to provide more information this coming Tuesday, May 21st. Now, there's a couple of other glitches that came out at the same time as this one. Another one has to deal with using a deployable shield to provide a series of actions to gain an unfair advantage over others with deployable shields. So as of now, they are doing the same thing. They are quarantining deployable shields. You will not be able to select them and they are going to address more information on this topic again next Tuesday, May 21st. There's also a glitch with IQ where you can do a series of actions which wind up leaving IQ's player model in the start spawn position, but allows her to actually be running around the map invisible. But because this glitch depends on interacting with the Claymore specifically, rather than quarantining IQ specifically, they've decided to quarantine the Claymores so IQ will still be playable, but Claymores will not be selectable. Again, to be addressed on May 21st. Now, before I move on to the other ones, I'm just going to stop right there and reflect on that for a minute. A lot of people have been giving Ubisoft crap in the last week or two since these glitches have really come into the spotlight. And people have really been giving them a hard time because it's like they're putting the reveal of the new season ahead of these game breaking glitches that are coming out. And some people are even clamoring for like an Operation Health 2.0 and things like that. But you have to understand the position that Ubisoft is in with this is that they have this whole rollout for a new season and a couple of weeks before that season rolls out, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, these glitches kind of spontaneously all sort of popped up at around the same time. So on their end, they're trying to do the best that they can between rolling out a new season and simultaneously addressing these glitches. And I know a lot of people will say, well, what's wrong with their in-house bug testing teams that can't find these problems? But you have to understand that, you know, no matter how many bug testers they have in-house, like you cannot put enough people bug testing inside of Ubisoft Montreal to compare with what 35 to 40 million active players will actually wind up finding in the wild when the environment is in a live game. But many of these kinds of glitches aren't something that's going to come up under normal bug testing conditions, but you know, 35 or 40 million people will probably eventually stumble on something. So really to give them a bit of credit, they're doing the best they can. And really while it sucks to not be able to use a deployable shield or a claymore or to be able to pick clash, these are much better alternatives than going up against clashes that can shoot through their shields and are invincible. Or for people that attach the deployable shield to their face and wear it as a bulletproof helmet and you can't kill them and dealing with that for the next month or two quarantining these specific aspects of the game until the problems are fixed are frankly a much better solution than constantly running into those broken issues. Quarantining is actually way better of a way to handle it. Now moving on to the other issues that are also on their plate, although not being handled with the quarantine scenario. So we've got the leaning death cam replay, and they say that when leaning players are killed by a headshot, the kill cam does not accurately represent the body's actual position, and they are targeting that fix for a year four season two test server. So they're going to be trying this out right away next week, which is when that test server session is expected to launch. Vaulting onto black mirrors. So this is something you could do by placing mirrors device on a wall. And then there was a certain series of events where you could use it to kind of vault on top of things. And that was not something that they intended to be able to do with that gadget. So they're making it so that you won't be able to do that anymore. And they will be testing that out during the next test server session. Again, starting this next week. Also on the list is Goo Mine forcing hostage into prevent revive mode. Legion Goo Mines can be used to down but not out the hostage and force them into a prevent revive mode. Vaulting onto the purple tarps of coastline. 
This is something that they wind up patching out every so often and then somebody finds a new and different way to get on top of the tarps from a different angle or a different position. This is always going to be a little bit of a problem with the game because it does use a procedural vault system. So anytime that it detects that a vault can be done, it's just procedurally allowed. And every time they think they've nailed them all down, somebody finds a way to get into some really bizarre new position where they couldn't get into before or nobody realized you could get on top of a certain ledge or railing or whatever. And from there, there's a valid vault prompt that nobody knew about, so it gets rediscovered again. They also want to address deploying gadgets on Prismas. Deployable gadgets can be deployed onto Alibi's Prisma. Now, I believe this goes into an order of operations, so I think it's still going to be allowed to throw her Prisma gadgets on top of a flat device, for instance, like barbed wire or like a frost trap or something like that. But this is if you do it the other way around and her device is down first, like maybe you won't be able to put a frost trap on top of it. And, you know, it would have to be the other way around. They're also addressing some sound bugs. There's muffled, missing sounds, and various sound issues, primarily on console. And they say they are preparing a large batch of audio bug fixes to be deployed at some point during Season 2. They must all be deployed at the same time, and we have some that are not finalized. That said, they've identified additional standalone bugs and are working on addressing those as well. There's also some gameplay topics, and one of those is smoke gas canister propagation. Gas from smoke's gas grenades can clip through walls. They say their goal is to rework the propagation so it is similar to the new Capito Firebolt and use this as an opportunity to revisit the visual effects on it. They are working on performance and visual tweaks to ensure that there is no impact on game performance, and they're refining the optimization in this family of gadgets. But we may or may not see that. They say that they have a target of during year four season two so that may be like a mid-season update or something like that it, it's not going to be ready to roll out for next week's test server in the beginning of the new season weapon sight misalignment is also up weapon optics are a few pixels off center in some situations and they want to implement a system to prevent most misalignment issues in the future at the same time they are improving the look of the guns in ads by adding secondary motion which is now possible due to the tech that keeps the scopes aligned with the reticle this is targeted sometime during season three They've decided to take a pass on all weapon optics and ensure that there is parity between them. As such, this has turned into a little bit bigger task than they first thought. And then there's shields. In first and third person, they mismatch when rotating. There's a misalignment of the shield for operators when they rotate. They needed to fix the situations where you feel protected in first person when rotating while fighting someone, but your enemy can sometimes see exposed parts of you, such as your shoulders, because the rotation isn't smooth and steady like in first person. This is targeted sometime during the second season. The majority of work is complete, but they're also taking additional time for testing to make sure that everything is good. Next up, if you use a controller, is the joystick sensitivity curve. They say that they currently have a sensitivity curve for controller users that is not comfortable for all players. So providing players with an additional joystick sensitivity option with significantly less acceleration is something they're working on, targeted sometime during this next season. They're currently in the design phase to determine how they want to approach the topic, and they're exploring and trying out new things. Balancing wise on operators, the next one that's going to be getting a little bit of some work here is going to be Glass. And they say that they wanted to bring him closer to the original idea of a sniper holding a line of sight with a high powered rifle. This will be done on this upcoming season and trying it out on next week's test server. They are currently testing a system that will allow them to reduce his effectiveness of pushing and still allow him to hold a line of sight as intended. For Smoke, they want to address adjustments to the damage curve for his gas canister, and they will move Smoke further towards an area denial role as originally intended. This will be sometime during next season. They're looking to change the damage curve from plateauing over time to instead ramping up over time. This will encourage players to avoid waiting in the gas for too long. So those are the current top issues that have been identified by both the development team as well as feedback that they've gathered from the community of things that they need to work on. Sort of a combination of both ends of that spectrum. But what do you think? Are some of the concerns you have about the health of the game, whether it's glitches or balancing or other tweaks addressed by these issues? Let me know down in the comments below. Now we're going to have a ton of new content rolling out very soon here with the full reveal of next season Operation Phantom Sight revealed this Sunday. The test server then goes live in the following week and there's going to be a ton of things to go over. So if you want to make sure that you're up to date on all that latest news and information, then do please like and subscribe. Click that notification icon so you're alerted as soon as new content becomes available. You can also follow me over at IcyCat25 on either Facebook or Twitter. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.